it's been in the news. This Amanda Knox thing has been in the news for a while. And even myself, on first hearing about this Amanda Knox um, story and, and, and the killing, the th interesting thing about it, of course, that caught a lot of people's interest and caught my interest was the Satanism. And now with her being vindicated and her boyfriend and so forth and so on, or being um, in the legal words of the so-called uh, Italian judge, some Claudio somebody or another, he says that Amanda Knox has not uh, committed any crime. Now, what was the accused, the, the, according to the prosecutor, and the prosecutor also is against the ropes because he has alleged Satanism, that this Kircher, the Kircher girl, was killed in some sordid and demonic and wicked act of Satanism, that Amanda Knox was also a party to or even an instigator of. Now, this, of course, sent shockwaves across the world, right? Now, she accused or she implicated an innocent man, an African, um, um, Patrick Lumumba. Now, I know I may sound to someone. I heard the thing Patrick Lumumba. The first person we're thinking about is Patrice Lumumba. And now some may not know who Patrice Lumumba is, but look up Patrice Lumumba. He was a, a, a African um, leader, up-and-coming uh, up Pan-African leader, who was brutally murdered by the Illuminati, Freemasonic, white supremacy, CIA, the MI5, all of them wrapped up in that because they were trying to stop the rise of the Messiah. They were trying to stop the rise of the black Messiah, even from Africa and even and especially in Africa. This is during the time of Haile Selassie and during the time of the Pan-African movement. So this name, Patrick Lumumba, sounds very much similar to Patrice Lumumba. Now, Amanda Knox implicated or accused this African, her former boss, and bar, he's, a, he's a bar owner in Italy, who employed this Amanda Knox and the, quote, American girl who's over there. Now, her roommate, I forgot the girl's first name, but the Kircher girl, the, the roommate who was killed, in the apartment that they share for, with, a, with, a, with a throat cut. and Now, here's what's interesting. The first charge is that Satanism, that, that an act of Satanism was being conducted, some orgy and some Satanistic ritual, some blood ritual was being conducted in Italy. Now, this vindication or this overturning of the charges against her is basically to say, here's what the judge said. The judge said, and I caught this on the BBC just a couple of moments ago, the BBC said that um, no crime has been committed. In other words, Satanism in Italy is not a crime. And, 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 and no wonder, why would Satanism in Italy be a crime, people? I mean, I mean think about it. Would Satanism in Italy be a crime when, when you think about it? Of course not. In fact, there's that video. It's on one of our VCDs, where one of the early VCDs, um, video CDs that we put out. I think it's the one on Babylon. It has some clips on Babylon, past and present, so forth and so on. And one of the particular clips on there is about um, Satanism in Italy. Now, this program, this clip is somewhat dated well before the whole Amanda Knox um, the Amanda Knox, uh, I don't know if you will call it conspiracy or, or, or really what you will call it, but before the whole Amanda Knox Italy case came up about the Satanism. And, and it was stories and eyewitnesses and other people who were, even the one priest guy talking about, yeah, Satanism is very big in Italy, Satanism. This is why when, when the prosecutor made that Satanistic link with, um, Amanda Knox and, and, and her Italian boyfriend, he knew what he was talking about. But this case is the vindication of Satanism, just like you see in the media. In the media, Satanism 
and occultic and blood rituals is not a bad thing according to this new normal. This is all part of the outgrowth of the new normal. I mean, Harry Potter, the, the, the whole vampire series and everything else. Satanism is the new normal. No problem with it. This is why the judge got up there. The judge said, um, no crime has been committed. He didn't say there's no, there was no Satanism and, and, and that Amanda Knox was falsely accused of Satanism. But if Amanda Knox, an American white girl, was, was doing Satanism in Italy with an Italian boyfriend, demonizing and blaming the black man, even her boss. Now, here's, here's the curious thing about it. He was freed. Allegedly, he was freed and now she has to pay some money, and, and, you know, he's in Italy. and I don't know if he's still in Italy, if he went back to Africa somewhere. But uh, Patrice, um, I, mean, I mean, Patrick, Patrick Lumumba, this is the thing about the names once again. His name was Patrick Lumumba, not Patrice Lumumba. He's been freed. We was wondering what happened to him because nobody's talking about what happened to him. But the one who has been accused of the crime looks like some homeless African man named, um, forgot his, uh, what name did I just say? I just picked up on a name. Um, it's an African, well, not an African, Afri it's almost like some African-American guy, some Gruber, Gruber or somebody else. He is the lone person who has been sentenced and tried and is serving time, not the African boss of Amanda Mott, who she falsely accused to get her out of it. But if you notice, over the last couple of um, the last couple of months, maybe year or two, there's been a lot of, in the media about this Amanda Knox thing. This is what caught my kind of interest. They said, oh, this charge of Satanism, everybody's saying, oh, that's preposterous. They never really denied the Satanism. It's like the judge says, no crime has been committed. But here is the ugly American. This, this, is, this is the quintessential ugly American in third world Italy the way the person said about that Italy is like a third world country with his law. In fact, if the courts decide to, which they probably won't decide to, they can keep on appealing. You can appeal forever. And, and even, if you're accused, even if you're accused and found innocent, they can appeal forever. But enough media and enough international attention has been made over this this American white girl who falsely accused her, her boss, an African, a black man who was employing her and giving her enough money to make, she could give her a job in Italy, an African in Italy, hiring this white American girl, you understand, who's been accused of Satanism along with her brother in Italy, which is known to be the Satanistic capital of the world. And this is not just us saying it. There, there's documents, there's evidence, there's other documentaries that already talked about this. This is why it, it was such a media firestorm. And so what the Satanists had to do is had to vindicate this one of their own in order to make it not a crime, to be accused of Satanism. After all, where does Satanism in the modern world really emanate from? From America. As far as a legal thing, the Church of Satan, 1966, Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan's California. It was Ronald Reagan's California government that allowed the Church of Satan, which is now a recognized religion. See, the Church of Satan is not just some fringe thing out in the bush Thing that people do or whatnot. No, the Church of Satan and being a Satanist is a so-called religious right in America. Even the, the United States military recognizes Satanists and, and, and people who belong to the religion of, of Satan, Anton LaVey, whether the Anton LaVey cult or whether the, the guy who started the Seth, the one who was so wicked that he got kicked out so he started the Temple of Seth. You understand, which is another, almost like the Peter and Paul so-called Christian split. This is what we have today. So, Amanda Knox and the Satanistic charge, notice, they never denied that. 
They basically are saying, well, what's the crime? And with Harry Potter being a number one, uh, you know, a number one thing in the vampire thing being sexy, you know, with, the, with the, being a vampire and being a cultic and being a, a, a bloodsucker, whether, whether literally or figuratively, like a parasite, an emotional, how you feel, how you feel, how do you feel about it, how did it, did it really hurt you, oh, that's so sad, boo-hoo-hoo-hoo, that's how they feed off of people's, a psychic vampire, is, is what they call it, it's not a bad thing anymore, so we really need to pay a little bit more attention to this, because the only person who is serving any time in the Italian um, jails or a system of things is a, it seems like a homeless black man. You know, when you see the guy on, 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 on the little clips, if they, they don't even talk about him anymore. In fact, they talk a little bit about, about um, um, Patrick Lumumba. They speak a little bit about him that, oh, how she accused him falsely. Now they've spun, they spun the story that, well, she accused him because she was um, being grilled by prosecutors without a, um attorney or without any legal. She was, she was being questioned in the way they would question any other Italian person. And she speaks fluent, fluent Italian, so forth and so on. She demonstrated this throughout the case, and on the last or the last couple of uh, court session, they at least I saw some clips where she was speaking that Italian stuff fluently. You understand? She had no problem speaking the Italian thing. So, what do we learn? What's the moral to this? Or, or, or is there any moral? This is this is a demoralization, basically for anybody who loves truth and righteousness. This is this is. This is Satanism being vindicated. It's not Amanda Knox being vindicated. This is Satanism gone global being vindicated. And basically saying it's all right to accuse two black men, and the African man obviously had more in his favor to defend himself than the other black man who, who now is the sole person accused of this crime, even though that is clear demonstration there was more than one person who was involved in it based on the evidence at the crime scene, so forth and so on. And then we just saw a picture of the girl's, I think her mother, the Kircher girl's mother, and she looks like e e either a, um, a, a Indian, a black Indian, in other words, one, one of the the so-called untouchable kind of Indians, what they call the black uh, Hindus or, or Indian, or, or uh, Australian. In other words, her, her features and her complexion seems like either her mother or she was part Indian or part um, Australian, um, Aborigine. She has an Aborigine kind of uh, complexion to her, but a kind of her features seem more Indian. But if you understand what I mean by the complexion, how you can tell the difference between, like, um, black African, black Ethiopian, black Hindu, black Indian, black um, Aboriginal. You, you know, there's, there's different nuances, a black African American, to the different nuances in our complexion that one who's not colorblind, you can see that, yes, we are all melanated people, but there are nuances of differences. So that's the girl's mother who was killed. So it would be good to look up this on the Internet if you can and, and check it out for yourself so that one can actually see what's going on here. So it's Satanism that actually gets vindicated in this particular case. And, and, and you're going to notice it more and more. This is why this story has been on every news, every, every morning news show, has featured a story every, like, month or so. There's been one or more stories. There have been specials, like on the 2020 or on, you know, some of these other so-called so -called news specials and everything like that about this case, about Italian justice, about how she's being railroaded. But nothing really is going into, well, is she a Satanist? You know, since Satan, since, since people were Satanists, 
regard themselves as a religion and they have religious rights, they should say, well, yes, we're Satanists. You know, since they, since they have the right now in this society, the limited um, temporal right of, um, you know, expression and nobody can if you go against them because they're Satanists and they say they're Satanists and you go try to kill them or whatnot, you're violating their so-called civil rights in today's world. So is she or is she not a Satanism? A Satanist. Nothing has been proven or disproven about that. The only one that has gone down for this is a black man. In fact, they had two black men. Notice, notice this. You remember we were talking a little while ago about how Satanism is like an inversion of the Bible. It's like an inversion of Christianity. It's like an inversion of Torah. Of, of Old Testament, notice you had, you had two goats. One goat was a scapegoat. This is like Patrick Lumumba, the African man who was freed, and now Amanda Knox, so-called, has to pay him some 20,000 lira or lira or liars. I don't know how that's going to work out. But there's this other Gruber, Grubber, Gruber, or this other black man that is the one that now has become the sacrificial. He's like the sacrificial scape, uh, goat, goat, or, or the, you know, and it all play, even the legal aspects of this Amanda Knox thing, it plays into a satanic, a satanic um, programming and ritual. This was all one big legal ritual. Just like they have other rituals, because when you understand what is really the, to use a Latin expression, what's the modus operandi behind all of this, you will begin to recognize why having such a publicized legal case like this has been very important for them. And this particular Amanda Knox case has been a vindication, a global vindication of Satanism as well as a warning and indication for, the, for, for, for black people or black men, especially black men. Black men, beware. Black men, beware. You understand? Because this has proven what is their modus operandi. One scapegoat got away. The African from Africa, African. This other black man seems like, like I say, he seems like a homeless, a homeless black man over here that they somehow just 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 got over there somehow. And then there's another room, and we don't know what it is, that there's a sex tape video with um, Tupac maybe having sex with Amanda Knox or Amanda Knox and Tupac. I mean, just the fact that she's working for an African man who owned a bar, and this would be the same person that she, will, she would accuse. Because remember, in Satanism, it's all about deception. So... This particular, this particular case really embarrassed, embarrassed the Satanists if it wasn't already part of, part of a more elaborate scheme to begin with. You understand? Already embarrassed the Satanists. That's why they said, what? She's going to be charged with Satanism? Are you kidding? In Italy, have an Italian boyfriend? You understand? Two black men getting the blame. One we had to allow to be a scapegoat, and the other one is now the sacrificial. Are you kidding? So they charged the prosecutor, the Italian prosecutor, um, who really exposed that with um, what they call it, like judicial hardness, or you know, but, but they charged him with being a prosecutor. In other words, he's been brought up on prosecu prosecutorial. Um, I don't, I don't know if you say neglect, but um, like duress or hardness, like being too harsh on this. What what he did. This is why his his situation is questionable. Unless he's part of it too, then they're playing roles, and he might apologize. She'll accept his apology, and everybody will be kumbaya, so to speak. But this Amanda Knox case, you need to understand what it's really about and how Satanism now has been publicly vindicated, you understand, in a very public and a dramatic way. It's part of the plan and agenda to have these public spectacles 
See, because it's through these pub public spectacles that they will be able to change um, feeling and emotion. In other words, to create a whole new normal. And, and this is just this is just half of the story, but it's very important. It's very dramatic. Uh, and, you know why? Why do white women like to do this? It, it seems like a lot of white women like to do this. Always like that that woman in in this in this park right thing, which accused some black men or black teenagers, and and it wasn't them. Like the other woman who killed her ch children and everything like that, and accused say it was some black man that did it. And it's been like that. There's been countless cases like this in recent times, where black men. You understand, were, were accused, and they didn't do it. And, and I will submit this to you as well. And though I know a lot of people have already been convinced otherwise, that even O.J. Simpson did not kill his wife, as many people, especially white people at first, believed it. Then the white people put the pressure on, on black folks, in different ways, and now that they have O.J. Simpson in jail and the woman who put him in jail, she, guess what? She has her own, she's filling in for Nancy Grace now. You know what I'm saying? She's filling in for Nancy. Uh, um, 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 what's that, what's that, that B-itch called? The one filling in for Nancy Grace? Oh, Nancy, Nancy Glass. Not, and you know how they advertise her? She's the one who who put O.J. Simpson in jail, figuring that, oh, when, when white people see that, even some black folks, they're going to be like, i got to watch her. She's really, really about justice. My people, my people, my people, we are living in perilous times. Watch and pray. Shalom, Rastafari.